Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sensationally Sexy and Over 50 Talk Radio. You're about ready to hear our Girl Next Door interview given by Chelsea LaVar. You can also read this article on our publication online at sensationallysexy.com. And here is that interview. So what are the achievements you are proud of and of accomplishing in your life? In 2002, um, I was 41. I had a, uh, a brain aneurysm. And um, I came home from work. I had a great day at work. I mean, we had a lot of laughing. I felt great. No headaches, no nothing. And I um, actually went, got my hair colored that day. I was just feeling like I was just lovely and all that good stuff. And I, um, I got home from work. I'm cleaning out my cat's litter box. And I um, felt like someone just smacked me in the back of the head. And I dropped to my knees. And, and um, uh, my, I had an aneurysm and the head burst. And... I, call, I was able to call the phone and call 911 and all this stuff, and then these, I mean, really seriously, Chelsea, these two gorgeous care, paramedics came to pick me up. Let me tell you, they were hot. And um, <laughs> they were. I was like, oh, my God, how cute. And then, um, but I got in there, they put me in the vehicle and all this stuff, and then I felt like I was going to throw up and all this stuff, you know. And, and uh, uh, but, but they took me there, they took care of me, and through the whole thing, you know, that happened on May 2nd of 2002, and I was in the hospital for 13 days, but through the whole thing, um, I never felt like I was alone, you know, like God carried me through it, but I was, I never, and it, with the main thing, the one thing I remember, and this is, I didn't remember this until my mom told me the other day, I, I never felt like I, because, you know, when you have a brain aneurysm, you can die, matter of fact, most people don't live mm-hmm. to it. And I never, I never thought I could die. I never even thought of that. My mom said, told me that the other day. And but I remember thinking that all these people kept coming to visit me, and I'm in ICU. And all of a sudden, I thought, Wow, oh my God! I'm, all of a sudden, I'm so popular. I didn't know that they were visiting me because they thought I was going to die, you know. And um, and and I think that that goes along with the stress thing about if you feel stressful or not. I don't, I don't know. I think the, I think the good Lord gave me a gift that I just don't. Um, I just don't worry about things, and maybe I should sometimes, but I just don't worry about things the way I should. I look at them in a way that it's a, there's an issue here, but we got to find a resolution and we need to solve it. And and as far as my aneurysm, I just think he just said, oh, we meant to we meant to give that aneurysm to the 90 year old next door. We gave it to her. We got to pick her up and carry her through it. And the good Lord <laughs> carried me through. And uh, <laughs> and um, so. Um, so maybe that's a, another reason, because I really do think that after that aneurysm, I became a different person as far as inside. I, I appreciate my friends more. When I get them on the phone, I always tell them I love them before we hang up, because you never know. And I do love yeah. them, so why can't I tell them? And, um, and uh, you know, I give them good sugar when they're here. You know, I hug them and give them kisses. And, um, yeah. and uh, my family, they're precious. So, and the same with Lisa. I haven't seen Lisa in years. Um, but I love her to pieces, and she's precious to me, you know, and, and when any time I talk to her or email her, I tell her I love her, you know, so maybe that changed me a little bit, too, um, and uh, so that's it. I just, I just, that just popped in my head when we were talking about the stress, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so you grew up with Lisa? Yeah, as a matter of fact, she was my next-door neighbor right across the street. And um, she was my she was my very first best friend. I think Lisa is either I think she she's either two or three years younger than me. I can't remember how much uh, how much younger she is than me. But um, but gosh, we played together forever. And uh, whenever our parents said we couldn't play, I would sit. We were right dressed, directly across the street from each other. So I'd sit on the the hill across one side, and she'd sit on the other hill, and we'd say, I love you, I wish you could come over, oh, me too, you know, like kids will. It was, like, so funny now when we look back on it. But, um, but yeah, she's she's just a wonderful, wonderful person, got a good heart and really sweet, and um, and I, I think we were next-door neighbors for probably 11 or 12 years until they moved up the street. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have a friend like that, too. We grew up together since we were eight, 
and we're still friends now, so. You know, you see, isn't that wonderful? I mean, really, so there are some friends that come into your life for a reason, and you have the thing, and then they go out, and then there's some friends that are going to be there, you know, they're going to be your friends forever, and, and that will never die. Even if you have a fight with them or you have an argument with them, you love them like sisters, and it will never change, you know? Mm-hmm. 